today we're going to discuss a very typical case uh, of advanced ovarian cancer. Um, so this is a woman who initially presented with advanced stage disease. She was assessed by a gynecologic onco oncologic surgeon and deemed appropriate for surgery. Uh, she had an attempt uh, at side reductive surgery, which was unfortunately not successful and she ended up with uh, residual disease, but then went on to receive what would be considered still today the standard of care, uh, which is combination chemotherapy with carboplatin and paclitaxel. Uh, she had a complete response uh, to that and then uh, enjoyed really a fairly long remission in, for about two years, um, which is really kind of the average for when we see uh, patients start to recur. So this isn't surprising. Uh, at the two-year point, she was reassessed and felt uh, to be appropriate for retreatment with platinum-based chemotherapy. And so again, was treated with carboplatin and paclitaxel, but this time uh, the targeted therapy bevacizumab uh, was added to chemotherapy in order to um, maximize her response to chemotherapy. Uh, she again had a complete clinical response after six cycles and then was placed on maintenance therapy with bevacizumab given every three weeks uh, until the time of progression. And she really did again enjoy a fairly long uh, uh, platinum free interval as we like to call it of about 1.5 years uh, at which point she progressed again or recurred again. Uh, so again, was assessed by her treating team, was found again to be appropriate for retreatment with platinum-based chemotherapy. She'd had paclitaxel twice before, and so uh, the other um, partners for carboplatin that we can consider are uh, gemcitabine or pegylated liposomal doxorubicin. Uh, gemcitabine was selected in this case, uh, and she received carboplatin and gemcitabine again, so this is her third platinum-based regimen. And after six cycles was again in a complete clinical response. And so no maintenance was used uh, in this uh, setting of therapy. Uh, and she had about 10 to 11 months before she represented with an elevated CA125 and uh, what we would term measurable disease or disease that could be measured um, uh, reproducibly on her imaging. And so uh, has recurred again and now is presenting for consideration of uh, treatment. I think this kind of case is, uh, again, very uh, standard, uh, unfortunately, for our patients with uh, advanced ovarian cancer. Uh, despite the disease being exquisitely chemosensitive uh, in the first line, um, and, and we've seen this multiple times in this patient, it's very rarely cured with surgery and frontline chemotherapy. Long-term disease-free survival remains dismally low at about 10 to 12 percent of patients, and so recurrences are expected. Uh, and when patients recur, we consider a number of things uh, in terms of how we're going to treat them. Probably the most important being the response to prior platinum-based chemotherapy and the duration of time since that, um, what we call the penultimate platinum-based chemotherapy. But other things we consider are the patient's uh, cell type of her ovarian cancer. Is it high-grade serous as it is in this case? Or does she have a clear cell cancer or a mucinous cancer? Those may play into decision-making for novel therapeutics in particular. We pay attention to uh, residual toxicity from her last chemotherapies, and this patient had paclitaxel twice. And so consideration of neuropathy would be um, very high for subsequent lines of chemotherapy. And also the patient's willingness to uh, have her hair fall out again is another thing that we have to think about. Um, uh, in some settings, we may think about whether or not the uh, patient should undergo a secondary side reduction of surgery. Uh, there has been a very large clinical trial done in the United States that would argue that that is not a good idea uh, and that patients who undergo the surgery actually live less long. And so that has fallen out of favor uh, in some schools, but there are, um, there's another trial ongoing in Europe which is asking the same question, and so many are uh, still considering this as an option for patients, and so uh, probably something that should be on the table, especially for patients potentially with oligometastases, uh, although I again will say there was a randomized phase three study that found absolutely no benefit for secondary side reduction, um, even in patients with an oligometastasis. So it's really, I think people are thinking about it, um, but the evidence would not support it any longer. Uh, so those are sort of uh, patient, and also kind of um, shared decision-making with the patient about what her goals are also play into the therapies that are selected. And so 
you can see this in play with each line of chemotherapy for her. So now she's presented again with what we would deem um, a recurrence that would still be um, appropriate for retreatment with platinum potentially, um, but there are other options as well that this patient can consider uh, and other uh, testing that hasn't quite been done on, in her case yet uh, that we need to discuss uh, that may influence the uh, type of therapy that's offered. 